We're going to do an example problem for shear and moment diagrams. And we have a problem that has a triangular distributed load here. So the load is increasing as we go down the span of the beam, which introduces a little bit of complexity to this, but I think we can get the hang of it. Okay, so getting started, the first step is always finding the support reactions here. So I'm going to draw the beam. Okay, and we have points A and B over here. At point A, we're gonna have AY, and then we're gonna have AX, and then we're gonna have BY over here, just the Y direction, because we have a roller here and a fixed joint here. And how do we deal with this distributed load, this increasing distributed load here? Well, for triangular loads, we can figure out the, total force here by taking the area underneath this curve here. So the area underneath the curve, if you remember from geometry, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So we have one half and the base is nine and then the height is six over here. So I think that comes out to be 27 kilonewtons here for the total load underneath so where do we place it well it's not going to be in the middle for an equally distributed load it is in the, directly in the middle but for this increasing one it is actually occurs one third away from the high side so one third of the base so if the total base is nine this distance here is three so that's one third so we're actually placing this over here and the total force is 27 and the distance there from B is 3 meters. Okay, so that's one to remember if you have a triangular distributed load it's one third from the high side where we can place that force. Okay, so now let's solve for the supports using our equilibrium equations. Some of the forces in the x-direction set those equal to zero. I think what you notice here is AX is the only one in the x-direction, so we get zero for AX. Now let's solve for the y-direction. All right, so upward we have AY plus BY, and downward we have 27, and set that equal to zero. Now we can't do anything more with that equation. So we'll sum the moments around A and set those equal to zero. Okay. So doing that, we have 27, which is going to create a negative moment, a clockwise moment. And the distance that it's acting away, that's, gonna, that's 6 if the total length of the beam is 9. So that's 6 meters away. And... Then we have BY, which is going to create a positive moment. And the distance that that is acting away is 9 meters. And that is it. So we'll set that equal to 0. And what's BY come out to be? BY comes out to be 18 kilonewtons. And then we plug that back into our equation here and AY comes out to be, uh, what's that come out, 9 kilonewtons. So we have the support reactions, and now we can start the method of sections. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram for the method of sections so we can figure out the internal shear and moment. All right, so I'm going to just break this here. And we have AY, which is 9. And then we have our shear downward and our moment. Now, I want you to note that we summed up all the load and made it a 27 kilonewton load downward here. When we do the method of sections, we, have to, we, can, we can no longer do that. We have to actually show the distributed load here. So we have this downward load here. And we need to know the slope of this line. So if we take, go back up here, at this end we know it's six, 
And remember the slope is the rise over the run. So we have the, the rise is six because it goes from zero to six and the run is nine meters, right? Nine meters. So we have six over nine, which is the same as two thirds. So this is the slope of this is two thirds X, right? All right. So that gives us the equation for this line. And as always, we are, this distance here is X. So we have X there. And using this free body diagram now, we can find the shear and moment for the span of the beam. Okay, so let's get started. Let's sum the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. All right, so we have nine going up, okay? And uh, we have V going downwards. And then we have to take into account this negative distributed load here. Uh, and remember that a triangle, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the one half times base, which is X, times the height here is two thirds X. So as to say that again, we are taking the area of this triangle and the area of a triangle is one half base times height, one half times the base, which is X times the height, which is two thirds X. That's that slope we found. And we set this equal to zero. And solving for V here, our shear, we have nine minus uh, X squared over three. Okay, so that is our shear. Now let's, let's do our moments here. So we'll sum the moments around point X. So X is over here and counterclockwise is positive. All right, so we have M, which is positive, right, counterclockwise. And then we have nine, which is gonna create a negative moment. So we have nine. And the distance that nine acts away is this X here. So we have X. And then we have to take into account the moment of this triangle, right? So as you remember, the dis if we have a distributed load that is a triangle, it's the same as the area underneath the curve acting one third away from the side here, this side. So um, that's going to create a positive moment around X, a positive moment. And the moment is going to be the total force, which is the area underneath the curve, one half, times X times uh, the height, which is two thirds X, okay? So that's the area underneath the curve. And then now we have to multiply it by the moment arm. How far is it away? Well, if this is X here, the distance from here to here is actually one third X. Okay, one third X. So the distance that it's acting away is one third X. And we set that equal to zero. So we have three X's in this equation. So then it becomes cubic. So we come out with the moment is equal to nine X minus X cubed over nine. All right, so that is a uh, long equation there or complicated equation. We're not going to graph this, but you could put it into your calculator and go ahead and graph this if you wanted. But the thing I want to do is remember we said the derivative of the moment is equal to the shear, right? So let's take the derivative of the moment here. All right. So the nine X, if we take the derivative of the moment, nine X, becomes nine, right? The derivative of this part. And then the derivative of this, right? We bring the three down. So we get three X squared 
divided by 9, which then equals 9 minus x squared over 3. And that is exactly the shear uh, equation that we got. So everything is checking out all right. And that is a, another example for shear and moment diagrams.